So you've heard of Ghosts and Goblins. It was on old arcades way back in 1985, snatching pennies and rumbling trousers through its hard... ...ness. Don't think much of that. Controlling Arthur, you'd fight the undead hordes through the power of its twitchy and addictive challenge, even if you had to take your clothes off to do it. Or waste it with quarters. Capcom were pretty chill with taking an IP and rolling it into so many goddamn balls it made Atlas a bit tired. And one of those was Maximo. Ghost to glory in America. I'm Strax, I've got my tea, and I hope you've played Super Ghouls and Ghosts, because that's what Maximo really moves on from. Sorry, it's sudden, but if we want a stable relationship, you really need to work with me. So here's some shit I didn't like. Bosses. Find the tactic. Repeat ad nauseum. Get on the fucking earth! Live system. It's a callback, but the game's challenging enough. Oh. No right analog control. Seriously, I don't get how this game is. Ah, oh, where the fuck did you come from? Tea break! I've realized a lot of games I've had the pleasure of playing for this channel never had much in the way of a compelling narrative. Something to tickle the taste buds, as it were. You'll be pleased to know this isn't an exception. Now, this game was actually first developed for the Nintendo 64, later being taken onto the Dreamcast, then finally being published on the PS2. It was a very early release, but despite this, a lot of its stylistic approaches do hold up. Misty particle effects, the glow of light-based objects, rubbery animation, and even some pretty solid water physics. For, for the time. All this does give it an edge, and it really gives some life to what could have been a pretty bland and ugly game. Because honestly, some models are blocky, voice acting is compressed and sometimes incomprehensible. Maximo! Though other times Maximo is so grunty I wet my pants a little- Oh shit! This is definitely a good one in terms of overall presentation though, especially when compared to many of the PS2 titles, even midway into its life. Maximo pops incredibly well, with the sharp reds of his scarf and helmet never clashing with the environment. His design is slick and memorable, which is no surprise considering that the game's art direction was a central focus. Susumu Matsushita was the sole illustrator that brought the characters and enemies to life. He is, by trade, a manga artist with distinct Western comic book influences, which is very clear when searching for his designs. I couldn't find much, but it's worth having a look. Some of his stuff is damn good. It's very easy to believe in this vibrant, cartoonish world Maximo is fighting for. This is helped with the music, which revitalizes the tracks of old for a familiar and fitting soundtrack to follow Maximo's adventures. It's not so much unsettling, but memorable and inviting in that adventure sort of way. Now, Maximo does take a lot from his predecessors and simply pushes it forward into the 3D realm. Treacherous jumps, a return to hidden chests by stomping the g ground, a beautiful array of underwear, and even those horrific time wizards. It's quirky and makes the game such a standout in what could have been a rather dull action game. With collectibles, they found a way to make them serve a purpose more so than for a score or completion. Gold is used for anything to help you out. Buying upgrades, teleporting, saving! It really adds a lot of importance to collecting every ounce of gold your way, making you a bit greedy. Whereas spirits, though carrying less of an incentive, can yield death coins every 100 or so gained, which relates to a continue system. So I mentioned abilities, and this is the real sloppy old flabber meat that really turns Maximo into something more than a naked dude running around swinging his sword into everyone's face. Don't, don't think much of that. Upon death, you lose all abilities, aside from the locked ones within your possession. Each world boss yields an extra slot, and it comes down to the value of single abilities that really provides the depth to death and even the abilities themselves. Do you save core skills, special contextual powers, or even abilities to gain gold more effectively? It's a big thing to note that the better you are at the game, the more skills you will end up accumulating, and the more worthy that run is. This rise in power and abilities rewards skillful play by allowing you to carry more than just three lock slots, but it also makes it a lot more risky. This means that failure brings you back down to size and will make you realize if you made the right choice swapping a double swing for a super contextual magic attack. This really is an elevation on super ghouls and ghosts allowing you to keep your weapon upon death, and I feel the range of abilities and management of such a thing makes it more personal and engaging. It's sexy as shit. <clears throat> Due to its relation to super ghouls and ghosts, it's not surprising that Maximo has demanding controls. Ghosts and Goblins, as a series, is notorious for demanding a lot from the player, and this game is no exception. Super Ghouls and Ghosts has this double jump that most would call... stilted. Its trajectory was a constant, with no way to drop, halt, or change the direction once you leapt away. Except with a second jump, which allowed you to change direction. This, for some, is a cheap way of getting the player in trouble. For others, me. it provides an extra slithery layer to the platforming that follows strictly to the focus nature of the title. Cut to Maximo, now you've got a 3D plane to work with! But I wouldn't say the rules or challenge changes. Yes, it can lead you into a lot of death traps unless you consider its consistent length and arc. I've not got the hang of it yet, but personally, 
I love the challenge. It's got a lovely flow to it, though I can admit it could do better being a little less bloated. It's something that could have been completely removed, of course, and herein lies the central crux of Maximo. At first glance, it's a mean game, throwing players constantly into their boxes and taking away a multitude of abilities upon death. But you should expect nothing less from a realized 3D rendition of the Ghosts and Goblins series. It's renowned for this shit. It's a dick! Through its demanding nature allows for small nuances. Your swings lock you into animations, therefore you need to initiate actions at just the right time to make the most of your attack, while subsequently accounting for the small frame of time that other enemies can feel you up something fierce. In the effort of fairness, enemies are the same. They have set timings and speeds, little habits to be exploited, and through that, you will learn to keep your armor on and stop scaring all the fucking kids. Above all else, I respect Maximo for allowing the rather simple wait and observe tactic to not be so phoned in. A skeleton twirling his sword after a strike adds character. The animation is so quick and natural, it never overstays its welcome and, as such, doesn't make you feel like a fucking idiot. The sway and acceleration of a ghost charging towards you is disorientating and certainly something to master. Something very befitting of an enemy that has such a smug grin on a STUPID FUCKING FACE! Ah! I definitely say that Maximo is a truly wonderful 3D jump for the Ghosts and Goblins series. It holds true to many of the series' little intricacies while building upon it to give the game an identity all on its own. I'm amazed I finished this as a kid, and I'm glad it's something that has aged well, all things considered. Tradition is usually a fickle thing, and a lot of games get stuck on the brand, usually making sacrifices to the gameplay experiences to account for change. But I feel with Maximo, it used its status as a new IP to really solidify what worked within its own vision, while achieving its goal as being a faithful callback to such a classic and prestigious series. It's the best of both worlds, really, and I think the team need to be praised for such a balance, even if sometimes that means it isn't everyone's cup of tea. It's not perfect, but it's good, and if you're the right lass, you'll find something to love. If not, you'll probably die. And die. And die. And die, 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 die! die!